Hey guys, it's Amelia, but not a pilot, just Amelia. So, as y'all know, I previously lived in St. Andrews last year when I attended university there, and now I am living in Edinburgh, and since I like traveling around a lot and visiting as many places as I can, I thought I would make a little, like, sort of guide video on easy day trips and places to go from St. Andrews and Edinburgh, and I'll explain, like, distance-wise how I got there and what you could do there. Let's get into it. First, I want to note that most of these places I reached without a car because I don't have a car. So I've been taking public transport mostly everywhere. Obviously, you could get to all of these places with a car. It would be easier and way faster. But I will be explaining everything in terms of buses and trains, I think, for the most part. Also, because I'm American, I name how far away things are based on like the hour it takes me to get there. This was pointed out to me recently that a lot of European people will say how far away something is based on like how many kilometers it is but I always say like oh it's a 30 minute drive or oh it's like a two hour bus like that's how I measure distance in my head so I apologize ahead of time but I will be linking all these things down below so if you would like to plan out your trip and know the kilometers, then you could do that on Google. First off, some cute towns that you could visit from St. Andrews, from Edinburgh. So if you're in St. Andrews, it's about a two hour bus or two hour train and bus journey from St. Andrews to Edinburgh, vice versa, same thing. St. Andrews is a really cute little town. It's a coastal little fishing village. It's got a lot of historical stuff. So if you're looking for like a full day of things to do, there's a castle ruin, a cathedral ruin, the golf stuff. It's the home of golf, so there's a lot of golf things to go look at. I'd say St. Andrews is mostly like a really cute place to wander around. It's also very small. It's literally three streets big. There's also a lot of cute places to eat and museums and things, which I've definitely talked about in previous St. Andrews videos. Maybe I'll make a more specific St. Andrews video separately. There's also the beach, although it is Scotland, so it's not going to be warm, but you could go to the beach. <laughs> For Edinburgh, obviously it is a capital city of Scotland and there is so much to do from historical things to museums to wandering old town to eating. There's a bajillion things to do. Most museums are free in Scotland. Same with the St. Andrews Cathedral is free to wander around, but if you want to go up the tower, that costs like five pounds or something like that. Other cities and places that are quite easy to get to that are also a fun little day trip, Glasgow. From Edinburgh, it's about a one hour train ride to Glasgow. From St. Andrews, you could take a 30 minute bus to Dundee and then take a two hour bus or train to Glasgow. So it is doable in a day. I have done it from St. Andrews before, but Glasgow is also a pretty cute city. I don't particularly love Glasgow. It's very uh, modern compared to the other cities. So I don't feel like it's got that like European or UK charm, if you will. It reminds me of Philadelphia in the US, if you know what that means. <laughs> but it is a city. So of course there's lots of food there, lots of things to do. There's some really nice museums. There's the Kelvin Grove and the I don't remember what that one's called, but there's one all the way in the middle of the park. I will link these down below. Some other places to go from St. Andrews or Edinburgh. Dundee is the closest city to St. Andrews. It is right across the bridge. It's only a 30 minute bus ride. From Edinburgh, I think it would probably still be about a two hour bus ride to get over to Dundee. And there's not that much to do in Dundee. <laughs> I would say it's nice to get out of St. Andrews sometimes, so it's fun to go to Dundee. But there's not really that much to do there. There is also two tiny museums. One of them is a V&A, which they have the sister one down in London, which is one of my favorite museums in the UK. But all in all, I'd say there's not that much to do there. However, Dundee has always been a very international and creative city port. Uh, it's right on the water and it's very famous for uh, inventions. I actually think their slogan is called the city of inventions because they've come up with so many things there, uh, which is sort of wild. I want to say there's a couple of different science things they invented in Dundee, like anesthesia or something like that. I don't take my word for that. I know it's something similar to that though. They've come up with a couple different, like very significant science things there. Uh, they also invented like Valentine's Day cards. They've also invented like there's a list of random things that have been invented in Dundee, which I think is quite cool. And the museum highlights that a little bit. 
There's also Aberdeen, which is all the way up the coast on the east side. Uh, to get there from St. Andrews, I think it's about a three hour bus and train ride. I personally have never been because it was uh, too much of an effort and I've been told that Aberdeen doesn't have that much to do there. However, it looks cute to me and I feel like maybe it'd be nice to go one day. Then we have Crail, Anstruther, and Pittenween. Those are three more little fishing villages in Fife. So from St. Andrews, they're probably all about like a 30 minute bus ride to get down there. And then it's like a 10 minute bus in between each one. They're all very individual, very cute. Just nice to like wander around. I don't really feel like there's anything to do in them specifically. Anstruther is obviously famous for the Anstruther fish and chips. However, they're just fish and chips. I don't feel like they're that special. <laughs> Crail, I think, is my favorite out of the three because it has a really cute little cafe gallery that has a nice view and some really nice little like crafty stores, including a pottery place. Pit and Weem also has a nice little town area. I've been to a yarn shop there. They also have a really nice chocolate shop there. 10 out of 10, really good drinking chocolate. To get to those little coastal towns from Edinburgh, I do think it would take probably two hours by bus. They are sort of remote. They're not like on the main bus route, so it's a bit hard to get over there. Now let's get into hiking. If you like to hike, then Scotland is obviously perfect for you. There's so many places to hike. From St. Andrews, I did multiple different little hiking trips. I never did like a backpacking trip or a multi-night one. So these are all things you could do in a day. You could also all reach these from Edinburgh, obviously, but I will be describing them from St. Andrews. And it's mostly the same from Edinburgh. They're just different directions. One of my favorite areas is Pit Lockery. It's sort of in the middle of Scotland. Uh, so it's a bit up more in the mountains. I'm not quite sure if it's technically in the Highlands yet. To me, it's like the start of the Highlands. I'm not sure if that's true, but Piclockery has a lot of really pretty hiking trails that are like very mountainous, more so than the rest of Fife, Edinburgh, Lothian area. To get to P Pitlockery, it's about a two hour bus train ride from St. Andrews, but it was very easy to do. Pitlockery is also a really cute little town. They've got a whole bunch of different little shops and cafes and things, and they do have a student hostel if you end up getting stuck there and need to stay the night. Then there's Tayport, which is right near St. Andrews, but is sort of hard to reach. It's got a little foresty beach reserve area. You could see seals here on the beach very often. Uh, this is really hard to get to, to be quite honest. I never actually ended up doing it, but a bunch of my friends went hiking here and said it was really pretty. Then there's the Lomond Hills in the middle of Fife. There's like these two humps. You could sort of see them from most everywhere in Fife and they're called the Lomond Hills. There's the West Lomond Hill and the East Lomond Hill. I think I did the West one, but I never quite remember which one it was. <laughs> but it's a really pretty area. I took the bus from St. Andrews to Falkland and then hiked up through the forest to the main uh, car park and then did the hike and came back the same way. So it took a whole day-ish, but like the hike itself was probably maybe an hour or two. Really not that long, but a really pretty little area. And on a nice day, you have really pretty views across Fife. Falkland is also a really beautiful little town. I've definitely done vlogs there because it was used in Outlander. So it's got very cute little like gothic little middle square. Last but not least is the coastal Fife path. Baby, do I hate this path. I watched a lot of influencers talking about this uh, like hike and so I was like, oh, it's not that bad. We could do it in like three hours. It walks all the way along the coast of Fife. So I did it from St. Andrews and I was trying to go to Anstruther, which is all the way around the thing. I did make a vlog about it. You could go watch it. It took me five hours and we didn't even make it there. And we never stopped. We just walked at a common pace the entire time. And I think we ate while we were walking. We stopped maybe once for like five seconds to drink and another five seconds to go to the bathroom. But like we never like stopped, stopped. And it still took us five hours and we didn't even make it to Crail. So definitely plan longer and better than we did. <laughs> we had like no real food with us. It was awful, but it is really pretty. And there's a lot of different rock formations and beaches to see while you're on the path. I wouldn't recommend doing that from Edinburgh because I would say, cause you should probably take the bus from Edinburgh to Crail or St. Andrews and then walk the path to the other location. And that would take a, too much time to do in one day, I think. Finally, here are some of my favorite ones. These were all part of St. Andrew's Burst the Bubble program, uh, which I don't know if they're still running while you are there, but 
when I was there in 2022 to 2023, St. Andrew's dorms were running different programs to help people explore more of Scotland. Because they have such a large international community, they try to get people to go travel, but on a budget. So they arranged little bus tours that like the wardens would basically come on the bus with us to these random places. <laughs> Uh, so one of them was an outlander trip, and they took us to, I want to say, three or four different little towns in the Fife area where they filmed Outlander, which include Falkland, Coolross, and a couple of other little cities and towns that were used to film. Another one they did was Anstruther, which was that little fishing town that I mentioned, and also the Kingsbarn Whiskey Distillery, which is pretty close to St. Andrews, but it's hard to reach without a car. Um... So it's like a fun little day trip to go over there with your friends and do a whiskey tasting. It's always fun to learn about whiskey and get drunk. What can I say? There's also a deer farm right near St. Andrews. It's maybe a 15 minute drive. I think the bus goes over there, uh, but it has the Highland cows, the hairy coos, if you will, <laughs> uh, and a bunch of different deer and they give you some feed when you get in and then you can feed all the different animals. It was uh, very cute, but also it's a zoo, and it's a little sad that all these animals were trapped in these cages, but they were pretty, like, large outdoor areas, and it's all these different deers that Scotland doesn't really have anymore because they don't really have native deer that much anymore in the UK. And last but not least, the Isle of May. So I... The Isle of May was very, very cool. I made a video about it. I will tag above and below. It is an island that is exclusively a bird sanctuary specifically for puffins and it's only open from I want to say May until September because the water gets too rough so they can't go out there also nobody lives on it so it's just, like hard to keep the program running all year I guess however the birds are only really on the island in the summer anyway I think, if I remember correctly, and that's when they lay their eggs and hatch and stuff is in May, June-ish. So I would recommend going then because that's the best time to go if you can. Uh, it's very easy to schedule and book, but you have to book it way in advance. I will tag it below, but it's this tiny little fairy. If you get seasick or nauseous, maybe don't do this. <laughs> it's a little boat and the water is choppy. But it's about an hour boat ride from Anstruther, so I took a bus 30 minutes down to Anstruther, we got on the boat, we took the hour-long boat out to the island, and then you wander around the island for about three hours, I think? Four hours? Which was very, very cool. It is beautiful. However, it does very strongly smell like bird poop, so please prepare yourself for that. And then you get in the boat and they bring you back to Anstruther, so... Definitely easy to do in a day, but a very pretty and very, very cool day. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. If you have any more questions about places or ideas to go for day trips from St. Andrews or Edinburgh, let me know down below. I will also be making a blog post about this, so if you just want to look at all the links and things, I'll tag them below, but also on the blog with pictures. Thank you. Bye!